Today on Ravens Rundown, we look at some blockbuster trade targets. And I mean blockbuster, okay? This isn't just your, your Jonathan Jones, your run-the-mill good players. These are some of the big boys, okay? So is it time to possibly call Jerry about Micah Parsons? He might tell you he's going to get me fired. He might tell me, you know, I'm not doing my job correctly like he did on the radio a couple days ago. But is it, still, is it time to give him a call? And what about Max Crosby? How is he feeling after Devontae Adams banished him and left him alone in Las Vegas? Is it time to give, give him a call? We'll talk about that in just a little bit. Thanks so much for tuning in to me, guys. Uh, really appreciate it. Do you think the Ravens need to make a move? Do they need to make a move? Okay, we're going to talk about some moves they could make. Talk about some moves I would love if they did make. But if you think that this team, sitting at 4-2, and two, should make a big splash, I want you to spam Y for me. Let yourself be heard. If you think no, go ahead and spam those ins. I want to see a little bit of contrast. All right, let's get into it. So the burning question is, you're sitting here, you're four and two, and you got to ask yourself, is it time to go all in? Because these two guys we're about to talk about, if you make a move for these two guys, you're going all in, okay? There's no ifs, ands, buts about it. Are you happy with where you are as a football team, or do you think there's one or two more pieces you need to add to be a legit, deep title contender? That's the question you got to ask. Let's check in on Micah Parsons first, and let's go to Dallas. Let's go to Arlington. Let's see what Cowboy Land's looking like right now because it's not looking great, okay? Mike McCarthy, he's a lame duck head coach. He's not got another year on his contract after this. If I had to put a lot of money on it, I would not be surprised if he doesn't have a job in 60 days' time from now. I wouldn't. Dallas, they've had a horrible offseason from the ending of that blowout playoff loss against Green Bay all the way up and now. Absolutely, they've done nothing. And Jerry, I don't know if you guys heard, I'm sure you did, had a wild radio interview on Tuesday, threatened two radio hosts that he was going to fire them, that he was going to replace them with somebody who could do their job better just because they were asking him easy softball questions. It's a shit show over there. It's insane. And, you know, you heard it all offseason long. The Cowboys are all in. Well, it doesn't really look like it, right? And it seems that at this point they may have backed themselves into a corner, Okay. And I really think they may have because they made some big decisions. They paid Dak, they paid CD, and now they've got a roster around those two that isn't very good. And so you got an asset like Micah, what do you do with him, right? And this is why I think it could happen. Because you paid Dak to the most expensive contract in NFL history. You paid CD the second best wide receiver money only behind Justin Jefferson. Do they want to pay Micah? Are they able to pay Micah? Or if they do pay Micah with what he's worth, with what he's set to earn, are they just going to trot out a team of those three guys because that's going to be like, what, 50% of their cap space going to three players? And it looks like they honestly might be secretly rebuilding behind the scenes. I know it's hard to say that when they got a $60 million quarterback, but guys, like they, just what they've got around him, it's not going to cut it. It's not a deep playoff team. And this is why I want to talk about Micah because you invest – in game changers. You got one at the quarterback position, okay? You got one at the running back position, and I think you got a lot of really good players on defense, but do you have a game changer? That's what Micah Parsons is, okay? He can absolutely wreck games. And if you look at his career stats, I mean, it's absurd what he's been able to do. Now, he hasn't been able to finish as well, Right, A lot of these seasons are, are pretty heavy up front. A lot of sacks in the first 12 weeks of the season, not a ton in the last half, but still 14 sacks, 13 and a half sacks, 13 sacks the last three years, over 25 QB hits in each of those years, over 13 tackles for loss, a couple of pass breakups as well. And if you look, he joins some pretty elite company in most sacks through a player's first five years. We got my man, Tennessee volunteer Reggie White at the top of the list with 52, and then right under him, we got Mark Gaston, 57, 47. Derek Thomas, rest in peace, 43 and a half. Alden Smith had a ridiculous start to his career with 42. And then you got Micah Parsons, 40 and a half. And he's already got five this year, okay? And so you say all that, but there is a problem, okay? Because I, I talk about it, and then you're probably thinking to yourself, okay, why, like, why not do it? It's so easy. Well, you're probably going to have to pay him. I have a feeling he does have one more year on his rookie deal, but I've got a feeling he's, he's not going to want to go into his last year of his rookie deal 
right? I have a feeling this offseason he's either going to hold out, he's going to demand a new contract, and it's up to the Cowboys if they pay it or not, right? So if you trade for him, you're going to, in probably six months' time, have to pay him somewhere around, what, somewhere near what Nick Bosa got, $30 million range, and he kind of deserves it. But if you look at the Ravens' cap space, I just don't know if they have that money. So if you hate the Cowboys, okay, and you want to still continue and, and take out your anger on them like we did in week three in Jerry World, like the video, and also go ahead and give me a Cowboy suck in the comment section down below. All right, let's talk about Mad Max. We're going to talk about him in just a little bit, what a contract or trade might look like uh, trading for him. But before we do any of that, guys, i got to give another shout-out to the sponsor of today's video. It's our friends at Ollie. You see those two smiling faces right there? That's me and my beautiful golden doodle dog. Her name's Applesauce. And uh, contrary to popular belief, guys, we don't just feed her applesauce. That's exactly why we use Ollie. And I personally think you should use it as well. And this episode is sponsored by Ollie. Ollie is clean, fresh nutrition for your dog. And right now, Ollie is offering a fantastic deal to let your pup taste test a personalized meal plan. Get 60% off your first box of meals when you use promo code CHATSPORTS at ollie.com. In five flavors they'll absolutely love, you don't have to be a vet to know that feeding your dog real whole foods with minimal processing is one of the best choices you can make for their health. A perfectly portioned whole fresh food diet has been proven to extend your pup's life by two and a half years. Who doesn't want more time with their best friend? With no harmful fillers or preservatives, Ollie is made in U.S. kitchens with ingredients that are carefully sourced from trusted growers and producers around the world. And I know what you guys are thinking, okay? When you have your dog on a certain kind of dog food, you get kind of stressed about switching them over to a different kind of food, right? Because it can upset their stomachs. And I know with our dog Applesauce, and most golden doodles, they tend to get upset stomachs pretty easily. But the great thing about Ollie is when they send you your package in your first box, they also send you a pamphlet. And it perfectly maps out every single day what percentage of their food needs to be that new Ollie food. So in just seven days' time, they're eating only Ollie and they're off of their old food and on to better things. So head over to Ollie.com. Tell them about your dog. Use code CHATSPORTS and you'll get 60% off your first box of meals when you subscribe today. Head to O-L-L-I-E dot com and enter code CHATSPORTS to get 60% off your first box. They offer a clean bowl guarantee on their first box. So if you're not completely satisfied, you can get your money back. And again, that's O-L-L-I-E dot com using code CHATSPORTS. So I want us to sit for a second. And just imagine, okay? Close your eyes. I'm going to close mine. Just imagine Max Crosby as a Baltimore Raven. He is just, I don't know if there's a guy that, that fits a franchise more honestly than Max Crosby and the Baltimore Ravens. He's an absolute dog on the field. He's unreal. And, and I know what you guys might be thinking, right? This doesn't make sense. Let's talk about why it might make sense, okay? The Raiders just traded Devontae Adams earlier this week. He's now a New York Jet or excuse me, a New York Packer. So then you got to ask yourself, will they fully sell, okay, because they could just stockpile a lot of picks, and if they don't have a top two pick in the draft after this year, and even though they beat the Ravens on their home turf, I still think they're bad enough to get a top two pick in the draft. But let's say they're picking at number six, and they want Cam Ward, or they want Jalen Milrow, or they want Carson Beck, okay, and they want to move up to go get one of those guys, they might just trade away some of their assets, stockpile picks, to make sure they can get their next guy. But we got to talk about the money, because a lot of times that's all it comes down to. And uh, Max's money is pretty high. I'm not going to lie to you guys, okay? His 2024 deal, it's a $30 million cap hit, $24.5 million base salary. Then 2025, $28.2 million cap hit, $22.2 million base. In 2026, $24.8 million cap hit, and an 18 dollars million dollar base. Now let's go over some of the details of that, okay? So a new team acquires in 2024, $16.8 million because of all the games he's already played. So in 2025, $23.1 million is non-guaranteed. In 2026, 19.7 of that is non-guaranteed. And Las Vegas' dead cap hit they get from that is $13.6 million this year. And then $10.2 
$1.5 million next year. And guys, his career has been phenomenal. It's been phenomenal. One of the better starts to a career that we've seen in the last 10 or so years. 57 and a half sacks, 134 QB hits, 97 tackles for loss, and 20 pass breakups. And what I love most about Max is just she's so damn consistent, okay? If you look at his last four years, including this year, right, with already five and a half sacks, 10 QB hits, nine tackles for loss, two pass breakups, he's gotten tw over 20 tackles for loss in the two years prior to this. He's gotten over 12 sacks in the two years prior to this. He's gotten over 30 QB hits in the two years prior to this. He's been an absolute monster. And I know what you're saying, right? I get it. People don't think he's going to leave because he's got the Raiders tatted on himself, okay? Guys, that doesn't matter. That is ridiculous to think that way. Marriage is supposed to be forever, yet 43% of marriage is in a divorce, okay? So if you think just because a guy has a tattoo that he won't want to go play for a franchise that's 10 times better than the current franchise he's actually playing, that makes no sense, okay? Tattoos, I'm sorry, they don't mean that much, okay? At least not when it's a football team on a guy's arm. I, I know a lot of you guys might have tattoos for loved ones and, and all that, and those are fantastic, but just because he has Raiders tattooed on himself, that means nothing. I can promise you that. So pick a pass rusher out of the two of those. Would you want Micah Parsons or want you, would you want Max Crosby? If you want Micah, type MP in the comment section, and if you want Max, give me an MC. If I'm being honest, guys, I think I might go Max Crosby. I think I might. You guys let me know down below. Thanks so much for tuning in. This has been Ravens Rundown. I'm your host, Joey Peterson. And if you're still watching by now and you're not subbed to the channel, well, then go ahead. You can change that. Just go down below and hit that sub button.